find you. <laughs> After killing his family, the father hung himself with a garden hose and yeah, had you run. You know what? Guys? Hey, sorry, didn't mean to didn't mean to startle you there. I'm so sorry for being late tonight. Um I had no idea how many responsibilities Corey had to deal with before recording a spooky scary Sunday. Uh, oh, sorry, I didn't shook you there. I think I'm starting to get the hang of it though. <laughs> must have, must have dropped that. Uh, what, Welcome. Well, welcome if you're new. Hi, I'm Campy Games. I'm hosting Spooky Scary Sunday for Corey Kinchin until he comes back. <laughs> I have a fun idea. Oh, I, I, sorry. I did. I didn't mean to scare you again. Let's let's go. Let's go get some snacks, shall we? Come on. Come on, it'll be fun. I said, come on. <sighs> All right, Let's see what we got in here. box of Cheez-Its. I just love Cheez-Its so much. I think if anyone ever took my Cheez-Its, I'm gonna make me some of these. One second, guys. Uh, I think my little siblings got a hold of the Cheez-Its. I'll be right back. Oh, okay, guys. Guys, I'm back. This thing is, it's almost like it's glued to me, right? <laughs> Let's just set that over there. All right, got, you guys got your snacks? Good, good. Let's, uh, let's, let's go back. Spooky Scary Sunday is a show created by Corey X Kinchin, and it's basically where the samurai and the campers, now recently added, come together as the beautiful tribe that we are, and we sit back and watch some scary videos together, sent from you guys via Twitter, but, you know, nobody knows about my, my, spook, my version of Spooky Scary Sunday yet, so nobody's gone to my Twitter to send me any video. And if your video gets picked, yes, Well, that's new. I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to check that out later. So sit back, relax, and eat those snacks that I told you to get earlier. And with all that being said, first video. All right, so our first one is called Slideshow, and it was uploaded by Buried Hatchet Productions. It's it's not a it's not a campy spooky scary Sunday without ads. Got to I got to get rid of those. <laughs> My dog. 
Cut that up. Alright, so we got some old dusty projector. I low-key don't mess with those projectors, bro. Especially the ones that take a long time to render what's on the screen. Oh. Yeah, they're just taking a nap. Bro, throw it away at that point. Hey, yo! You do look like an egg wearing a jacket. Oh! Oh! Burn it! What are you, you gonna sleep with that? Nah, chief. GG. Oh. Yeah, buddy, that's I'm pretty sure a slideshow player can't do that. Smooth 60 frames, bro, he's gone. gonna do apparently it did something free please take and he and he did okay <laughs> Can't help y'all, man. Y'all already turned into some towels. Oh, wow. Okay, yeah, just keep it there. Just let that stay there for a long time. Buried Hatchet Productions got it, man. I am subscribing yes. to that. They got some good stuff. All right, I keep shaking my camera. Sorry, guys. Next video.
Alright guys, so this next one is called Hatched, and it was uploaded by Dylan Clark. Uh, I hate that noise. I love root beer. <sighs> yeah, and that just so happens to be the one he grabs. Oh, oh my gosh. What the heck is that? That's your reaction? Oh. Oh, that's that's gross. Yes, throw it. Thanks. Smart. He's a smart guy. I mean, he didn't really stuff it down there, but I would put my whole foot in that garbage can. My egg turned into a person. So he's doing handstands. He's not using his feet to walk. <laughs> You're not blending in too good, my guy. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Freak, bro. Keep that in mind next time you guys want to make some egg sandwiches. Next video. Alright guys, and for the last and final video, we have two uber nightmare horror stories, and it was uploaded by MJV Animations. This happened June 2018 in Portland, Oregon. I understand I acted like an idiot in this situation. Since then, I've become much more observant, cautious, and honestly, much more paranoid. I went dancing with friends and was really drunk by midnight. Unfortunately, this was back when I Why had a little like money. 
And I realized you could save money by eating very little before going out. And it would take fewer drinks to get drunk. So, I was so drunk I barely remember my friend ordering me an Uber home. My phone was dead, of course. I can vaguely recall them helping me into the car and telling me to get home safe. I don't remember greeting the driver or the first minute or so. But soon, yeah, yeah, after getting in, up. he asked me how my night was and if I smelt. Honestly, I was just thinking about bed at this point. So I just sort of slurred out that I did sometimes. He then offered me a joint. And this is the first moment I get sort of nervous and begin paying attention. I tell him something like I'm really tired and just need to get home. I think he said something about it being an indica-based joint. And it made for great sleep. Once again, I say something not exactly like no, but mm. not a yes. Which he takes as a yes, I'll take the joint now. Once again... I'm still drunk enough, I can barely see straight or speak clearly. So when he says, okay, well I have to cancel the ride really quick because I can't give it to you while I'm on the clock. No! Or something to that effect. It takes me a second to realize how dangerous oh, that no. is. And by the time I start to say something, he cancels the ride and pulls over. We were in an area just east of the Hawthorne Bridge and it was totally secluded. Take so me home. Parking lots, a closed auto body shop, no one in sight. It's starting to hit me. I'm now in the car, not with an Uber driver, but with some stranger. I can't call anyone, and he's trying to give me some weed that could have anything in it. For the next minute or so, we're pretty quiet. Or I just can't remember any small talk he tried to make because I was beginning to panic. And every time he handed me the joint, I would take fake hits, just breathing okay. it into my mouth and not into my lungs. All right, smart. I felt tired clumsy and weak that kind of drunk where you're almost at the point of nausea and i knew i couldn't do much of anything to defend myself at this point i remember vividly being fixated for a moment on the fact i didn't even have a pair of keys to defend myself with as my building used fobs for just about everything and i didn't take my mail key with me as i'm freaking out i look up to see if this guy is sort of noticing and i make eye contact with him in the mirror he was staring at me but I couldn't read his expression. Finally, he says something along the lines of, well, let's get out of here. When riding is your passion. He meant it literally. <laughs> they I tell him I'll just call another Uber to get home, thinking at this point it might even be safer to walk. And he says, no, I still have your address. I'll just take you home. For a moment, I was relieved. I guess I wanted to believe him so badly that I would get home safe. I tried to calm myself down, thinking he hadn't actually done anything threatening. Maybe he was just the typical stoner guy and I'm overreacting. At this time, I lived on PSU campus in downtown Portland, in the southwest area of the city. He's driving me north on the east side of the river. There are several bridges to our left, and as he keeps moving north, he has several opportunities to take an exit to hop over the river and get me back downtown. He keeps skipping them. We keep passing mm. bridge after bridge that could get me home. Up in Northeast Portland, there are some large industrial areas that can get very isolated at night. And Portland in general is surrounded by lots of forest. So I knew he could have me in a secluded area really quickly. After he passed like the fourth exit for a bridge, I've been racking my brain for a way to make him actually take me home and say something to the effect of, hey, my boyfriend is waiting for me at home. Which was true, though I said it in a very meek way. My driver says nothing. But he did take the next exit for a bridge and basically hung a giant U-turn and started taking me home. Even as we're on the west side of town heading south, I'm still shaking and have my hand on the door handle, thinking about just hopping out at a red light the closer we get to my apartment. My phone is completely dead. And he honestly still has several chances to hop onto nearby highways and speed out of the city. We're getting pretty close to my apartment now, and I'm once again trying to convince myself I'm being paranoid about some stoner. I can't navigate the city. Although a few minutes before, I was so scared. I was almost crying. So once we get about two blocks from my apartment, I lie and tell him it's easiest to stop here and he can let me out. Again, he doesn't say anything, but does slow the car. I'm flooded with relief and even feel myself smile. But 
when I go to open the door, nah, it's locked. Chief. I nah. try to work the lock mechanism manually, but it won't budge. I look up at him and oh! see what's up, and, and he's got his head turned oh. around almost fully towards me. Shoulders still facing the road, Bruh. smiling at me. The worst goddamn smile I've ever seen. It looks so mocking, Close and it just did mouth. not reach his eyes at all. I started crying and asking him to open the door. I was so freaked out and still very drunk. And thank God he did. I will never forget the sensation of vulnerability. Not just being drunk in his car with no way to contact anyone, but even if I got out of the car, I kept feeling like he would somehow grab the back of my shirt and pull me back in. As oh, silly as that sounds. Killer. When I got home, I found out my boyfriend had actually gone out with his friends last minute and wasn't even home. Bruh. He wouldn't even have known until much later I hadn't got back home safe. The next day, I convinced myself I was freaking out over nothing, which I realized still could be the case. But in my gut, I had truly felt in danger the night before. Technically, this guy could have been harmless, but I still think I should have texted nah. my friend and had her report him. The big thing that made me think of this was recently hearing about how Ed Kemper, the co-ed killer, would go for practice runs, picking up hitchhikers and seeing if he could get the passengers or potential victims to trust him or how far out of his comfort zone he could push them without saying mm -hmm. anything. Obviously, this guy wasn't Ed Kemper, but I hate wondering. I'm about to fight you just for being creepy. Sorts for my Uber driver. This happened to me when I was in college. It's one of the bigger party schools with an entire street of bars you can wander to and from. My boy oh my God. friend had gone back to his hometown for the weekend, so I decided to go out with some friends. I had a bit too much to drink and was on the edge of a blackout, knowing with my whole mind and body and soul that I did not want to become a liability for my friends for the rest of the night. I told them I was going to Uber home. My friends insisted on coming with me, but selfishly, I wanted to call my boyfriend when I got home and have a bed to myself. So I told them all no, but took a screenshot of my driver's name and info on the app and sent it to them. When he got close, I hugged right. them and walked out the door. Like I said earlier, it's a big party school with a lot of bars in one area. So the entire strip is lined with Ubers from about 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. It was almost bar closed, so there were a ton. And look, I was hammered. I don't even know what a Toyota Yaris looks like at the best of times. So, as I'm searching, a man rolled down his window and asked if I was waiting for an Uber. I said yes. He told me he wasn't my Uber, but if I canceled my ride and accepted his, then he would take me home. I was already thinking of the leftovers I had in my fridge at this point. So, I agreed. Cancel <laughs> canceled my Uber and linked my account up with his. He was super nice, and he was an Uber. I've heard stories of fake Uber drivers, so I did make sure he was legit. He called me beautiful a few times right off the bat, but hey, I was a girl in college. I got that a lot. I remember we talked about our favorite books. I told him I was an English major, and he was super interested in listening to me talk about tutoring ESL students in my free time on campus. He was an immigrant who had to learn to speak English. So we lamented about how awful it is to learn such an intricate language. But how rewarding the successes were in the end. When he missed the turn for my apartment complex, I figured it must have been because he was distracted by our conversation. I politely pointed out that he missed the turn and he said he turned back around. No, he said I know. Rather than making a U-turn though, he took the longest way to get back to my apartment. I was still in familiar territory, so at least I knew that he was going in the right direction. But I was starting to get nervous. It was around 2.30 at this time and it was super dark and no one was awake, let alone outside. When he missed the turn in again, I asked if I could get out and make it back on my own. He seemed kind of offended, like he was surprised that I wasn't as engrossed in our conversation as he was. I kind of jokingly told him that I was a broke college student and he was racking up my bill during a surge. That seemed to straighten things out a bit. Oh, I completely understand. Yeah, calm yourself down. And turn back towards my complex. I was honestly so freaked out and drunk at this point that as soon as he pulled into my complex, I was like, okay, right here is fine, thank you, and pulled on the door handle when he came to a stop. It didn't open. It's the same situation. I hit the little lock latch, 
Still nothing. Let's go get coffee, he said. He clicked the button in the app to say the trip was completed and clicked out of the app. At this point, I'm just trying not to look as freaked out as I feel. I told him I was tired and it was late and coffee was the last thing I needed at this moment. I tried the door again just to make sure I wasn't drunk and handling the door wrong. Still, didn't open. We should just sit here and talk until you're feeling better. Boy, if you don't- explaining to me. No, I feel we fine. Let me out. We can go somewhere private too, if you'd like. Do you live alone up there? Let me out. At this point, I'm frantically digging through my purse for my phone. Fuck. Being polite. When he asked what I was doing, I told him I promised my boyfriend I'd call once I got home safely. Wrong thing to say. He got pissed that I had a boyfriend and didn't tell him about it. He asked what his name was, what he did for a living, we just and met. where he was right now, at this very second. When I gave half-hearted answers, he got even angrier. He demanded to know why a boyfriend of mine would be stupid enough to leave his girl alone with another man. Him. He repeated it twice. At this point, I'm trying not to cry. When I figured my phone must have fallen under the seat, I started digging around down there. He demanded to know what I was doing. I gave my best impression of a genuine laugh and said, I dropped my phone. He told <laughs> me to stop digging around in his things immediately. I stopped. Mind you, I'm still drunk as hell at this point. I was just trying to keep my shit together and not vomit or pass out. I tried the door a third time. Still nothing. He asked if I wanted to get coffee again. Even kind of begged a little. I told him no. I just needed sleep. He asked if I lived alone again. I lied and told him I had a roommate. He asked Bro. if it was my boyfriend and I said no. He got this kind of angry again and then crazy. straight up asked if I would made my boyfriend up. I told him no and he got angry and asked why he would leave me alone with another man like this. I'm usually pretty good at reading people and I get the vibe that this guy thought he was a knight compared to my boyfriend. So I lied. She, she through biting her lip? Like, my teeth. What the heck? I told him I was going to break things off with my boyfriend. That we weren't even really that serious. That he was an idiot to leave me alone like this. Thank whatever f***ing God was watching over me. But that didn't. He calmed down and said that that changed things. He asked if I wanted to get coffee again. And I changed my answer to, not tonight. He asked for my number and I gave it to him. He called to make sure it was my real number. Mm -hmm. My phone buzzed from between the seat and the door this and I fished dude. it out. He grabbed my phone for me and demanded I show him my boyfriend's contact info. When I did, oh. he deleted it and gave me a big smile. Feels good, doesn't it? I told him, yes. He put his number on my phone and gave it back. <gasps> oh. I told him good night in the hopes that he would release me, and he told oh, me he'd like geez. to talk for just a little longer. I had to stay locked in that car with him until 4.30 in the morning. I don't even remember what we talked about. He asked if he could hold my hand at one point, to which I said I needed to break up with my boyfriend before I did anything with another man. He liked that answer, thankfully. When he finally let me out, the door was child locked so it could only be opened from the outside. The windows were sense. locked too. I walked up to the wrong building steps and crouched down in the shadows of some random person's door until he drove off. I sat there for another 10 minutes and then sprinted to my apartment. I called my boyfriend and explained what had happened. His response was the one I get from everyone when I tell this story. Report that f to Uber. But even though he didn't know what building in my complex I lived in, he still knew where I lived. I was terrified of seeing him again. I was terrified of calling an Uber. To this day, I refuse to Uber alone. Well, and I make sure Uber. I have my phone in my hand every time I get into an Uber now. Please, be cautious when getting into an Uber. Don't be uh, like me. Yeah, I think we can all learn a valuable lesson from this. Don't take an Uber! Well, alright guys, that's gonna be the end of this week's Spooky Scary Sunday. If you guys did enjoy, remember to leave a like, comment down below, and let me know if you guys want to see some more Spooky Scary Sunday. Also, go follow me on Twitter, okay? Well, I'll, I'll give you like five seconds to do that. Love is a strong word, say love is a strong word, well I'ma sing it for you, baby. Okay, you better have done it now. But yeah, I really do need some more su uh, submissions, because I feel like it would be a lot easier to get have videos ready instead of me looking for them every single time but yeah if you guys want to see some more spooky scary sundays make sure to follow me on twitter and also send some videos down and uh yeah i think that's gonna be the end of this video i hope you guys have a good night I'm, uh...
I got a few things to clean up out there. Kind of left it a mess. All right now, I'll see you guys tomorrow. What we do here is go back, 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 back.